So I've got a question to ask you all. What's the first place you go to if you don't know the answer to something? Where else? Google, right. But what happens if you go to Google and ask them why people leave their jobs? I'll tell you, they lie. People don't leave their jobs because of bad managers. And I'm going to take some time over the next few minutes and show you some data to prove it to you. You may be wondering where this data has come from. I work for a company called Culturam, and we collect survey data. We help people to run employee engagement surveys. They also run exit surveys, and we collate the data so that we can see for people who go on to leave their company within a year or two after their engagement survey, how they were feeling at the time and how it was different to the people who went on to stay. Now, the first thing that we notice is that people are actually pretty honest. So we ask people, do you think about looking for a job at another company? Or do you see yourself staying with the company over the next couple of years? And there's a really big gap between the people who stay with the company and the people who do actually go on and leave, which gives us some confidence in the data itself. So let's look at where the other differences are in the data. These are the questions where we see some big gaps between people who stay in their jobs over the next couple of years and people who go on to leave. The people who are happy in their role, who actually feel that they're doing the job that was described to them when they took, the, when they took it on, are much more likely to stay on. The people who leave are less likely to believe that their company is in a position to succeed over the next few years. They're more likely to not believe that they can make a positive difference at work. The people who stay are more likely to feel that they are receiving appropriate re recognition for what they do and have confidence in the leaders. And they're more likely to believe that there really are good career opportunities for them at their company. What we don't see on this list is anything about managers. It gets even more interesting when we look at the data at the other end of the scale. These are the things that make very little difference to people when they come to making a decision over whether to stay in a job or not. One thing that we see is that physical workplaces being an enjoyable place to be, there's no difference between the people who leave and the people who stay. I think there's a bit of a backlash around the kind of free ping pong, free craft beers, and all that kind of stuff. I'm not saying that it doesn't attract people into your company in the first place, but what we see is that when it comes to making a decision whether to stay or leave, people aren't hanging around for the games. Now we did another, um, another little survey. There was about 175 teams we, we looked at the data for. Oops, I've just given the game away now. Um, but we, we correlated these four different areas and we tried to, to figure out which of these was most closely related to whether or not people felt committed to their job. And we already know that people who were committed were more likely to actually stay on at the company. So who here would think the managers would be the biggest reason why people would stay? Okay, so you're all listening in the first half. Who would think that it was the leadership? Put your hands up. Ah, one or two. Who would think it was pay? Oh, there's a few more. And who would think it was development opportunities? So you would be right. Development opportunities had almost twice as big of an impact on whether people felt committed to the company and were more likely to stay in their job or not, even compared to leadership, which was the next most important one. And pay and managers really had very little impact across the company on whether people really felt committed to staying. Now, if you've been in your job between about two or four years, this next slide is for you. So you can take this back and show it to your boss and tell them why they should be really nice to you at this point in time. I like this because I'm coming up to my two-year anniversary as well. Um, so what we see is that when people get to their two-year anniversary, they go through a period where they really feel more negative, they're more likely to then go on and leave and to feel less committed. Now, these people are going to be some of the most valuable in your company. They know their jobs well, they've been there for a while, they probably have a good network in the company and they know how to get things done. And yet, these are the ones that companies are letting feel more negative. There's also interesting gaps among genders. So women, when they leave, more of the women who actually left felt that there was a lack of open and honest communication in their companies. More of the women who left felt that their company wasn't really in a position to succeed over the next few years. And they felt that workloads weren't particularly fairly divided at their company. Now, gender diversity in the tech industry is a big deal. It's a big focus for a lot of companies. We want to try and make it more equal. 
So these are things that we should be paying attention to. So just to, to summarize all the things that I've run through very quickly today, we had, a, we had some data from around 20,000 people to, to put this together. And these are the things that they told us were more important to them when they were deciding whether or not to stay in their job from that data. So a lack of confidence in the company's future, a lack of confidence in the leadership, a lack of career development opportunities. There's a danger zone in that two to four year tenure. Just lock them in the office for that time. For women, we need to think about making sure there's open, honest communication and fairly divided workloads. And no Google, we don't see anything there about direct managers. Thank you.